Good evening and welcome to Southern Hills this evening. We do want to extend a special welcome to all of our guests and visitors tonight, as well as those of you joining us via live stream. I hope everyone's had a chance to pick up one of our bulletins at some point today. Uh, but a few announcements we'd like to make before we begin. Uh, we do want to continue to remember Sharon Welburn and Barbara Jones as they're both going through chemo treatments. Also, Tanya McGrady will be having surgery on Tuesday. I want to, want to remember uh, Barbara Dees, John Dees' mother, who fell and broke her leg, and they have moved her to a nursing home. So I know they would like to be remembered in our prayers as they're going through that transition. Also, Shannon Woodruff is still in the hospital in so so South Carolina. Uh, she is still in critical condition. Uh, we also want to extend our sympathy to the Moore family on the passing of Terry's sister, Marcia Spillers. She passed away Tuesday, and her funeral services were held in, over the weekend in Texas. Um, also tonight, after our evening services, we'll be honoring our graduates in the back, both from high school and college. Uh, so we encourage everyone to stay for that. Dinner is provided. Uh, we are asking that after uh, when we dismiss, if our graduates and their families would go through the line first, uh, and then we'll follow up, follow them as, after they are, have gone through the line. Um, this Friday evening, May the 27th, we'll be having our personal evangelism training in the Fellowship Hall at 630. This is open to everyone, um, and everyone's encouraged to be a part if you can. It will begin at 630. Uh, we'll have hot dogs and chili, and they'll be followed by two 20-minute sessions on training on how to uh, do a personal Bible study. Um, you don't need to bring anything other than yourself. Um, if you would, just sign up in the back if, if you're able to be a part of that. It will conclude by 730 on Friday evening. Uh, but those are the announcements that I have for tonight. If you would bow with me in prayer as we begin. Father in heaven, we are thankful for your word. We are thankful for this time as we gather around your throne. We pray that as we enter this period of worship that you be with each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening. So good to see each and every one of you here this evening. Our songs this evening have been request of our graduates. So if there's a song you don't like, please blame the graduates and not the song leader. Um, so our first song will be number 682. Number 682, To God Be the Glory. I mean, the first verse of this song. song will be number 841. Sing and be happy. If you will please stand for this song.
song is Magnificat by Show of Hands. Who knows this song? We um, show this live, please. Who knows this song? By Show of Hands. Okay, okay. So, for those of you who don't know, it is a four-part song, kind of like The Greatest Commands. It's going to start with the sopranos, then basses, then tenors, no, then altos, then tenors. So, if it's a train wreck, well, a graduate chose it, so don't blame me. My soul magnifies the Lord. Scripture and opening prayer. I'll be reading from Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. Again, that is Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And if it seems evil to serve, to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the gods of which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's pray. Our God, we approach your throne where your son sits at your right hand. And through him, we're able to approach you, and for that, we are grateful. Well, we have many on our minds that have been mentioned. We continue to keep them in thoughts and prayers so that they know that we love them and care for them. And the most loving way is to lift them up to you. Father, we continue to remember Sharon Wilburn Barbara Jones as they continue their chemo treatments. It was great to see them both this morning. We pray your continued blessings on them. We pray for Tanya McGrady and her surgery this week, that all will go well for her and her recovery be short. We pray for Patricia Sholey 
and the heart failure that's been had there, Livy Pegram's uh, grandmother, that you will be with that family. For Barbara Dees, who had a fall and a, a broken leg, and for the transition that's been to a nursing home, for the things that go there, that you'll be with both her and the family, for those that are attending to her needs medically, and for all the family needs as well. Lord, our hearts go out to the Moore family, and Terry especially, in the loss of her sister, that you'll comfort them, that you'll wrap your arms around them. At any time in this life, we have additions, new babies that come along. For those that were grateful, we also have those that pass on and we're thankful for the memories that we have of them. Lord, we pray tonight for our graduates. We're excited for them. For those that have graduated college that will be going on to bigger and better things, maybe not even knowing what they're going to be doing yet, that you'll be with them, help them as they decide, present them with opportunities, we'll keep them on the right path. For those graduating high school for transition time for a summer that's in between high school and college or whatever they may be about, that you'll be with them. Be with families as transition happens. We're thankful for the family, the way that you established it. We pray for mothers, for fathers, for the family unit that continues to be under attack by so many in this country for reasons of power or money or selfishness or just pure evil. We pray that you will defeat them in that. Help us always know that you designed the family unit, a man and a woman, a husband and a wife, children. Make the fathers leaders of their home make them spiritual leaders, ones their children's that children will look up to, the examples. Help those of us that are older to be an example as well, to be there for others when they might need. Well, we have many things coming up. Camp is coming up very soon. We pray for the staff there. We pray for the campers most of all for spiritual growth, but we know many things come out of time together and the bonds that are made, that you will bless them. Continue to breathe with the congregation here at Southern Hills. Help us to love one another. Help us to extend grace to each other. We all come from different backgrounds, different upbringings, some even from other faiths that have found their way through the truth. Help us to build each other up, not to tear each other down, to look for opportunities when somebody needs encouragement in any way that we can help. We're thankful for your word that guides us. We continue to pray for our young families here and pray that you will help them and these sometimes trying times is there is so much to be done for a young family with small children. The days are full. Well, we pray that you most of all make us like you. We're thankful for your son, for his life here on this earth, for the miracles he did that we have recordings of for the inspired word that you gave that we have to this day. Help us treasure it more than we do. Help us share it more than we do. Pray for those that will be here this coming Friday to better ourselves in spreading your word, to overcome any anxieties one may have in simply sharing your word caring for someone, loving them enough 
to share your word. I pray for this church here that meets at this place that you will be with each and every one. Bring us close together. Give us unity. Most of all, I pray that you help us all get to heaven. Forgive us when we fail, as we do often, Lord. Continue to be with those that have asked for prayers here recently. Thank you for your love. And it's through your son's name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Song before the lesson will be number 350. Number 350. And our invitation song will be where he leads, I'll follow. Did I mess something up? It's possible. It's 350 if you might have to use our song books today. Jesus, hold my hand. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me. Tonight, as we begin, I wanted to look, begin by looking at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. And that reads, Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been, having been built on the foundation, the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Many of you know that 
Jennifer and I were in the process of building another house. Selling and moving the house that we built a couple of years ago was not in the plan. But when you don't get along with the HOA that, what, that well, that's what happens. So when we built the first house, the last house we, we just sold, we didn't have much of a choice in how it was built and, and the things that went in it. We had a few choices, but not a lot. This time we're building a complete, I guess what you call a completely custom home to where we were an integral part all the way through from choosing everything from the ground up. It's an exciting time to go out and, and to watch the plans that are on paper become a reality. Now, as I go out and I, I watch those guys work and watch them measure, watch them cut, watch them fit all of the pieces together, we watched, also watched as the foundations was dug and poured and we see the house take shape. One thing that is so important to us that, that we keep coming back to is that we want whatever house we build, whatever house we live in, to bring glory to God. And it makes me think about that verse from Ephesians. It is so comforting to think that we are chosen to, we, when we choose to put Christ on in baptism, we become a part of God's household and the foundation being Christ himself. Now as we continue this process of building, we also have to think about what's being put inside. And I say we very loosely. Jennifer has to think about what's being put inside. From the walls to the paint, to the floor, to the cabinets, to the, to the trim that, that is going to be in there. I think about our spiritual house also in this verse. We are framed for a habitation of God through the Spirit. What choices are we making that will make our house acceptable to God and proper for His Spirit. Tonight, as we honor our graduates, those graduating from high school and college, each of our graduates stands on the threshold of the next stage in, in life. Whether it be entering into the workforce, whether it be going on to further their education, in the next few years they'll be choosing a career, quite possibly choosing who they will marry, who they will build a house with, who they will build a family with. The foundations of their lives have been poured. And now brick by brick, stick by stick, they are building their foundation, their spiritual habitation. But tonight, I want to issue a challenge, not to just our graduates, but I want to issue a challenge to each one of us. Build wisely and build well. Joshua said in, 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 in uh, Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua was building a spiritual habitation, habitation not only for himself, but also for his family. In building, in building our house, we have suffered many setbacks from the cost of materials rising to labor issues to people not coming to work when they say they're going to come to work. There have been times that we've stopped and we've asked ourselves, is it really worth the headache and the hassle? But as we think about that, we also think about faith does not come to, th does not come to make things easy. Faith is there to make it possible. Now our graduates, as we said, are standing at the threshold of charting a new path. They are putting in the ground floor of their spiritual habitation, gaining their independence, choosing where they will worship, and who they will become. Many of us face our own crossroads, and I'm constantly thinking about what I'm doing, thinking about what, what path I'm taking, and reinventing myself. We may be working, we may all be at a different stage in life, working on a different part of our spiritual house, but we are all working on it. And the uncertainty, uncertainty is the, is the same for all of us. In building our spiritual habitation, faithfulness is the mortar that holds us all together. In light of this, I want us to look at ways that we can make sure that we're remaining faithful. Remaining faithful to the church, remaining faithful to our ongoing Bible study, 
and growing our faith as we continue down our various walks of life. God's will for your life is is that you remain faithful to Him just as He is faithful to us. Faithful to others, faithful in, in our level of our spiritual habitation, and faithful to the end. That which He wills, He will enable. God is faithful to do what He says He will do, as far as, it is poss- as, far, as far as it is possible with us, we should do the same. We should reciprocate His faithfulness to us with faithfulness to Him and faithfulness to others. Are we people that are known to be faithful in our marriages, faithful in our business dealings, faithful in our parenting, faithful in our volunteer commitments, our friendships, and our church attendance? First and foremost, we must make the decision that we are going to remain faithful no matter what life brings our way. Now Joshua, before he knew he was going to be, the, be placed as the leader of the Israelites, had made the decision that he was going to remain faithful. In Numbers chapter 13, Moses sends 12 spies into the Promised Land, and they spent 40 days spying out the land, studying the people, learning about their their produce. And upon their return, ten of the spies came back to the land, and they, they said it's flowing with milk and honey. And in fact, as they were bringing back some of the produce, it took two men with a pole between them to carry back some of the produce that was in the land. But their report of the people was different. The report of the people was they were strong, and they lived in fortified cities. And upon this report, the Israelites were stirred up, and to the point that Caleb had to stand up and and quiet them down before speaking. Now Caleb spoke up first and said, let us go up, go up at once, take possession, for we are able to overcome it. We read that in Numbers chapter 13, verse 30. And then at at this time, as, as Caleb said this, the other ten spies, they spoke out against Caleb. And stirred the people up once again. And the Israelite nation, we read in Numbers chapter 14 verse 5, that they were ready to appoint another leader to take them back to Egypt. But however, in Numbers chapter 14 verses 6 through 9 we read, But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is exceedingly good. If the Lord delights in us, He will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which is flowing with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed for them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Joshua made the decision that he was going to remain faithful even in the face of challenges. His challenge to the Israelites at this time was do not rebel against the Lord. Do not fear the people of the land because their protection has departed them. Now there are going to be times that we're facing circumstances that are so big that we don't know where to begin. But where we can begin is the same place that Joshua challenged the Israelites to begin. Begin with our faith and begin with not turning our back on our faith. Joshua lets his faith guide him through the, guide guide him and the Israelites through the promised land right up into his death. In Joshua chapter 24, Joshua is addressing the nations. He accounts the history of the Israelites all the way back to Abraham. In verses 14 and 15, he, con- he concludes, Serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose yourself this day who you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. 
we all know that some kind of life event is going to happen that is going to challenge our faith in some way. So what can we do today to prepare ourselves for this? We can do the same thing that Joshua chose to do. He made the decision early in life that he was going to remain faithful no matter what mountain he was facing. Now, remaining faithful is more than just making a decision to do so. It requires action on our part. Now, as the school year is going on, the day school has chapel, and one of those songs that we sing in day school chapel is read your Bible, pray every day, and grow, grow, grow. Neglect your Bible, don't pray every day, and shrink, shrink, shrink. Acting upon our faith, first and foremost, is letting God speak to us through His Word, and in return, us speaking to God and through prayer. In the Old Testament, the Lord gave the Israelites specific instructions on how to offer sacrifices. He was specific in what He wanted them to do and how He wanted it done. In fact, in Leviticus chapter 1, verses 1 through, 1 through 3, that reads, Now the Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from the tabernacle of meeting, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When any one of you brings an offering to the Lord, you shall bring your offering of livestock, of the herd of the flock. In his offering is a, in his offering is a burnt sacrifice of the herd. Let him, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it in his own free will at the door of tabernacle of meeting before the Lord. In, the, in offering a sacrifice, the Israelites had to prepare. First of all, they had to make sure that they had a male that was spotless. They had to bring the animal to the door of tabernacle. All of this took planning. All of this took time and all of this took effort. They did not get up one day and just decide, we're going to go make our sacrifice. They had to plan what they were going to do and how they were going to do it. Now, since the death of Christ, our sacrifice is different. We don't take an, take an animal, animal to the tabernacle, to the door of the tabernacle, and go forth and through the set of rituals that is set forth in the Old Testament. As Paul writes in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Our responsibility is to present our own bodies as a living sacrifice. But what we have to do is make sure our sacrifice that we offer is acceptable to God. So what is God expecting out of the sacrifice we offer? Offering our, our sacrifice, offering our lives as a sacrifice as acceptable is first having a strong faith that will stand up through the tests of time and do the right thing in all things. Building a strong faith will lead us into obedience, but not just the obedience up to baptism, but obedience all the way through our Christian life. Generally, as we talk about obedience, we talk about baptism, but obedience goes farther than the day of baptism. Obedience takes us and makes us make sure that we're being involved with the church on a daily basis. Being involved in the church takes on several different aspects. In your schedule, find time to invest in the church. Invest in the people of the congregation. And in doing that, in investing in the people of the congregation, it gives you a chance to work for the church. In James chapter, James tells us in chapter 2, verse 18, but some of, someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. Provide, proving our faith through our works is part of offering our bodies as an acceptable sacrifice to the Lord. Building a strong faith is also spending time meeting with God's people no matter where you find yourself. Now, as we have traveled through, traveled on different vacations in different parts of, of this country, we've noticed that God's people are everywhere. 
Now, in places that we may not think the church is very strong in number, the number that is there, the, they're, they're strong in their faith. Now, as, as we've listened to different stories of people traveling and traveled ourselves, we've heard of people having uh, car, uh, car trouble and, and flat tires and different things like that. The best thing that they have been able to do is contact the local church and find people that will come to their aid, not necessarily fix the problem for them, but help to band-aid the problem. Finding a local church and physically attending that local church and letting the elders know that you will be attending that church is part of offering our bodies as a living sacrifice. Now, the first thing Paul would do upon entering a city is to go find the synagogue and to meet with the people and, re and talk to them and reason with them. We see this as an example in Acts chapter 14, verse 1. And that reads, Now it happened in Iconium that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews. And so... And so spoke that a great multitude, both Jews and Greeks, believed. Paul would take every opportunity he had to meet with the people of God. Our first, our first thought when going to a city, no matter if we're moving there, moving there permanently, moving there to go to college, or just visiting there, is to locate the, is to locate the local church in order that we will have a place to worship, upon the times that are set forth for worship, or if there's a problem that arises, we know the closest place we can go to get genuine help. Now, as I was preparing and thinking, I thought about professional sports. And I thought as we watch professional sports, a lot of times we'll notice that they're lacking fundamentals a lot of times. The fundamentals that help make the game go better, help them do better, as Christians, we can get into that same routine of forgetting the fundamentals. We begin to focus on issues. We begin, we begin to debate different topics and tend to shy away from the, from the basics of what a Christian is. And the whole reason the churches exist in the first place is to bring glory to God. We can glorify God by preaching His Word and telling people about His Word. We read in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, and he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not will be condemned. Our responsibility is simply to teach the gospel to everyone that we come in contact with. Now, teaching can take on a variety of different forms. It could be supporting someone who's down on their luck. It could be simply befriending someone who needs a friend. Or it could be standing up in front of a group of people and presenting a message from God's Word. Everyone is different in their approach to teaching, but everyone has the obligation to teach the gospel. It is our responsibility to figure out what the method is that we're going to use and it's, our met, and it's our responsibility to get that message out to the people around us. Glorifying God is helping to meet the needs of those around us. In Acts chapter 6, the number of disciples was multiplying. And, and, and as if with anything, as it grows, there's growing pains. The Hebrews at that time felt as though their widows were being neglected. The apostles gathered a group of disciples together... And they selected a group of men who would make sure that the physical needs were being met by everyone so the apostles could focus on prayer and ministering, the, ministering to the Word to the everyone. It takes everyone to minister to a community. Physical needs, physical needs are just as important as anything else. In meeting the physical needs, it gives us the opportunity to preach the gospel it gives us the opportunity to spread the good news to those whom we are helping. Now, upon baptism, we all receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We read that in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Upon receiving this gift, we all become part of the body of Christ. We are all striving to be the best version of ourselves so that, so that the communities and those around us can see Christ living with, within us. 
as those who will be going away to school in the fall or entering into the workforce or those of us who are not standing on the threshold of, of, a, of a new adventure or a new chapter in our lives, it is important for us to remember that we are all a part of the body of Christ and we all have the responsibility to spread the gospel as we fulfill the commandment in different ways, but we're all doing it. In Psalm chapter 119, verse 30, David says, I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I have set your rules before me. As each of us continues to build our spiritual habitation, know that the life, that the life of faithfulness is one in which we, choose, we, cho we daily choose to place our hope in God with the certainty that He will not fail us. I encourage all of us to build it well and build it wisely. Choose, choose faithfulness in how you choose not to squander those opportunities, not, not, not to squander the opportunities that we have to serve other people. And use your abilities faithfully to bring glory to God who gave us the abilities. Guard, guard our thoughts, faithfully entering them on what is, fo focusing them on what is true. Using our words faithful, faithfully to edify and to pray without ceasing. So tonight, as we typically do, we offer the invitation of Jesus Christ. We offer the invitation to put Christ on in baptism to begin your walk as a New Testament Christian. Or if you've done that and, and you've made some decisions that aren't, are contradictory to the, to the gospel and need the prayers of the church, whatever your need may be, would you come forward as we stand and sing? Before we have the opportunity to honor our graduates, we have the opportunity to remember and honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The emblems are prepared, and if you did not have the opportunity to partake this morning, you can this evening. I will uh, offer blessings for the emblems, and then uh, if you would raise your hands, there are men in the back that will serve you. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we're once again, so thankful for your love. We're thankful, Father, that you first loved us. And we're thankful this evening for the opportunity to remember what you, your son did for us. We ask, Lord, now that you would bless the loaf, that those who are here this evening may be partaking, Lord. We ask, Lord, that um, they would uh, search their hearts and take, Lord, um, in remembrance of what Christ did for us. We're so thankful for the example. We're thankful for the word. And we ask now, Lord, that you would be with those this evening. In Christ's name I pray. And amen. Just raise your hand.
Let's bless and pray for the cup. Father God, we're now continue in remembrance of the love that you had for us in sending your son to this earth to die, to be an example for us, and most importantly, Lord, to be raised from the dead. We're thankful, Father, for the blessed hope we have. We're thankful for the spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus that you've granted to us. And now, Lord, we ask that you'd bless this cup. Be with those, Lord, that are about to partake it. And we're so thankful, Father, for the remission of our sins through the blood of Christ. In his name I pray. Amen. If you did not have the opportunity to give back to the Lord as you've been prospered, you will this evening. After I pray, if you'd raise your hands again, the men in the back would uh, help with your uh, giving back to the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, again, you've blessed us so much. And tonight, Lord, we have the opportunity here to give back as you've prospered us financially. We're thankful, Father, for the abilities that you've granted us, the health, the jobs to earn a living for our families. And Lord, we pray that we would be diligent and set aside, Lord, those first fruits to give back to you that you've given. You've given us everything, Lord. Everything we have belongs to you, and it's just on loan. And we ask now, Lord, that you'd be with those that are going to give back this evening and be with the elders as they oversee these funds, as they are dispersed. And may souls be added to the kingdom before it's everlastingly too, too late through these monies. In Christ's name we pray, and amen. It is so good to see each and every one of you here this evening. We do hope you can all come back for our Wednesday evening service at 7 p.m. And as has already been stated, we do have the graduates reception in the fellowship hall, and all are invited to that. So if you are able to stay, you are very welcome too. Our closing song will be Mansion, Robe, and Crown. If you will please stand as we sing.
before we pray, I just want to say that uh, this is the prayer for the food as well. So everybody just go get in the line after. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day of worship you've given us. Thank you for allowing us to fellowship with one another and have a place to glorify you with those of like precious faith. Please watch over our graduates, be with them as they go out into the world. Bless the food we're about to eat and keep us safe as we go home tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>